it doesn't matter if it's 2012 or anything uh, the first thing you want to do is actually make a mess so you can go straight to insert and link CAD or import CAD but you're not going to have as much functionality as if you go to massing first click uh, in place mass um, and you're going to give your mass a name it doesn't matter you can say it's a SketchUp import and then from there then you click insert hey guys I've gotten a lot of questions this week about how to import a SketchUp model to Revit so here's a quick video hopefully under a minute so if you're in Ske uh, SketchUp and you have your model what you need to do is save it as an earlier version so it needs to be at least version 6 or 7 I typically just save it as 6 just to be safe um, as soon as you do that then you can actually import into Revit so if you open Revit doesn't matter if it's 2012 or anything uh, the first thing you want to do is actually make a mess so you can go straight to insert and link CAD or import CAD but you're not going to have as much functionality as if you go to massing first click uh, in place mass um, and you're going to give your mass a name it doesn't matter you can say it's a SketchUp import and then from there then you click insert and link CAD. Uh, you guys know the difference between link and import. Uh, I always link. Uh, choose your file. You can if you had set up an origin or center center uh, you can do that but it doesn't really matter at this point um, just to start and you'll see your SketchUp model right away and then at this point you can finish the mass and you'll see that it suddenly takes on a, uh, a much more detailed form. You kind of see uh, a lot of different elements at separate faces. That means that now if I want to create walls uh, I can just select pick faces and I can go in and just highlight these walls and it will automatically make it uh, to the profile I want. Uh, so let me just make a couple walls here and can see what I mean. Okay, So now if I uh, actually hide this uh, mass you see that it's made a lot of the walls to the exact size. Um, and I can do the same thing with the roof. Uh, roof by face. I can select these slanted roofs up here. And I can click create roof. And now to prove it, you can hide the uh, model again, the mass. And you see that it's created actual roof elements as well. So you go through this process. Uh, a SketchUp model to a Revit model could be done uh, on, at a PBL scale in under an hour, I believe. Uh, if you go through this uh, mass import um, and then you create walls, windows, uh, floors, and uh, roofs by face. Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of questions this week about how to import a SketchUp model to Revit. So here's a quick video, hopefully under a minute. So if you're in Ske uh, SketchUp and you have your model, what you need to do is save it as an earlier version. So it needs to be at least version 6 or 7. I typically just save it as 6 just to be safe. Um, as soon as you do that, then you can actually import into Revit. So if you open Revit, it doesn't matter if it's 2012 or anything. Uh, the first thing you want to do is actually make a mess. So you can go straight to Insert and Link CAD or Import CAD, but you're not going to have as much functionality as if you go to Massing first. Click uh, In Place Mass, um, and you're going to give your mass a name. It doesn't matter. You can say it's a SketchUp import. And then from there, then you click Insert and Link CAD. Uh, you guys know the difference between Link and Import. Uh, I always link. Uh, choose your file. You can, if you had set up an origin or center center, uh, you can do that, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, just to start. And you'll see your SketchUp model right away. And then at this point, you can finish the mass. And you'll see that it suddenly takes on a, a much more detailed form. You kind of see. Uh, a lot of different elements at separate faces. That means that now if I want to create walls uh, I can just select pick faces and I can go in and just highlight these walls and it will automatically make it uh, to the profile I want. Uh, so let me just make a couple walls here and can see what I mean. Okay, So now if I uh, actually hide this uh, mass you see that it's made a lot of the walls to the exact size. Um, and I can do the same thing with the roof. Uh, roof by face. I can select these slanted roofs up here. And I can click create roof. And now to prove it, you can hide the uh, model again, the mass. And you see that it's created actual roof elements as well.
So you go through this process. Uh, a SketchUp model to a Revit model could be done uh, on, at a PBL scale in under an hour, I believe. Uh, if you go through this uh, mass import um, and then you create walls, windows, uh, floors, and uh, roofs by face. Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of questions this week about how to import a SketchUp model to Revit. So here's a quick video, hopefully under a minute. So if you're in Ske uh, SketchUp and you have your model, what you need to do is save it as an earlier version. So it needs to be at least version 6 or 7. I typically just save it as 6 just to be safe. Um, as soon as you do that, then you can actually import into Revit. So if you open It's tow 30,000. Uh, this is our full-time home and we've lived in it for six months now. This is our kitchen. We needed a really functional home with the twins. Um, if it were just Kevin and I, we would have gone a lot smaller, but thinking about kids and growing into this home since it is our full-time home, we wanted everything to have its place, everything to just feel really organized and have a home. So um, I'm also kind of type A OCD and um, I knew that I'd want like fruit and toaster and like our dishes drying to have one space and then my prep space to be just prep space. So I separated and had like two different counter spaces. So over in this corner is where I can put just all of the kitchen items that stay out. And then this is just always dedicated to prep space. Since it's small, you want to have like a dedicated prep space. Um, and then I've just always wanted the sink. There's no reason that I got a super fancy sink except I've always wanted it. And we were building our home from scratch, so why not? So we actually custom designed the house, but we hired a builder. So Tiny Heirloom was our builder, and they, like, this is like their standard farmhouse sink that they put in all their houses, either this one or a copper one. And then we have parked in a ton of different places. Our most recent place that we were parked was um, on a bison farm. And so we were on a really old well where all of the bison drink out of. So this Berkey has seriously come in handy. Um, we don't, we've never had to buy drinking water Supposedly you can even uh, filter pond water. We haven't had to do that yet, but um, we have it just in case we need to. We move like every week to two weeks. We've parked in um, two places for a month, but everywhere else we've just moved like a week to two weeks. We've got it down now where we can like be out of a place within an hour. And we also built to travel. We knew we wanted to travel, so like every we know exactly what we need to do. We use uh, baby locks, which are really helpful. It helps keep the boys out of things you don't want them into, and it helps with travel. But all I have to do, I just make sure the Berkey is full, and I take it off of its stand and put it right here, and it's never fallen. So, I mean, it's pretty heavy, and we've had lots of things come down. I forgot to take the knives down. Thank God we didn't do wood floor, because the floors would have been destroyed. We did luxury vinyl. I found it online. I wanted, like, something, like, really funky and wood textured, and this was the only company that I could find that made this, like, funky wood texture. Our knives did come down one time, and there are no marks at all. So the Berkeys stood up to every drive, which is pretty amazing. And then our builder also said that they've never put more cabinetry into a home than they put into our home. Like I already said, that I'm type A and so when we decided to go tiny it all happened really fast but luckily I was able to do everything I wanted to do I took first we got rid of everything we knew we didn't need and then the things we like thought we might need we pulled all of those out put them all out on our counters and pared down again and then I started I just took plastic bins that we had in the garage and I started setting things in plastic bins and measuring that exact space and then sending that to our builder and saying, I need a drawer this width, this height. I mean, I sent them like 20 emails a day with exactly what we needed, but you can see like our dishes fit perfectly in here. They're in the dishwasher right now, but normally they're like the small plates here that are literally fit right there, small plates here that fit right there. We have like Macy's Fiesta wear that's never broken. We had a drunk friend break one, but when we're driving, we've never had an issue. We put in these super heavy duty locks. So I don't even have to strap these when we travel. I just push in and we're golden. It makes life really easy. And so the only things I have to strap down in the kitchen, we even have straps, like I have all of the boys' art supplies and like any office stuff we might need up in these bins up here. Those just always have a strap. They just live with a strap. The boys' backpacks just live with a strap. So we really don't have to do anything to the kitchen except make sure that all of the cabinets are pushed in. And then these heavy cabinets, I put an extra lock on. I put a baby lock on these and a baby lock on these too. But like 
We fit it so much stuff just because I did that pre-measuring. I've got, since we're cooking for a family of four, I've got my full-size Instant Pot. I've got a full-size Ninja. I have a small food processor because I just like to make pestos and stuff and a hand mixer to make ho uh, homemade cookies. And it all fits perfectly in this drawer. And then all of our pots and pans in the base for the blender. So we really don't feel like we're missing out on anything, even in like a substantially smaller space. If the three feet of prep space isn't enough, I can always pull up our dining room tables. And this hardware is amazing. We found this on Amazon for like 30 bucks. It's so sturdy. I don't love furniture that I have to like maneuver to turn into 10 things. With the boys, it's just too hard. When they want something, they want it now, and I'd rather just give it to them now than deal with the breakdown. So um, this table is the only thing that I actually have to do anything to, and I don't mind it at all, um, just because it's so simple. Pull it up, they can do it now on their own. Pull the stools out, and then wipe it down when they're done eating. Push these two little clips, 